This is Adventure for Life. I'm Joel. I'm going to do today the interior review of my brand new 2024 Enios Grenadier Trial Master. Welcome to the show. So again, I um, wanted to do a review of the interior. Uh, love, love the car. Uh, I, I, I want to say I love everything about it, but I can't say that because there are some things that need to, need to be improved. But uh, we're going to take a step inside the vehicle and see, you know, what's, what's the what the good parts and a few of the weak points are about the interior. So first of all, let's just talk about fit and finish. And I'm going to open both the front and the back doors and we'll see. Again, you look at the, the dash, the uh, instrument panel up on the ceiling, the, uh, the seats themselves, the Recaro seats, um, everything about this car from a fit and finish standpoint to me is, is really, really good. Um, so we'll, you know, I want to, I want to go through those various aspects. It just dawned on me, I didn't have this written down, but several people have commented about this. Oh, I think they called it piano black kind of coating on the interior here and complain that it's too fancy you know and you see it on the door over there there's too fancy for a grenadier and and uh you see it here um by that control but you know honestly i've barely noticed it and you know we'll see how well it holds up obviously it does hold up there's not going to be a problem with it it is a little fancy you know um just like the bmw shifter looks a little out of place and at least from my standpoint that brown leather here and there looks a little bit of out of out of place but uh you know it's not bad all right so lots and lots of comments about the front driver's footwell so again the 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 most comments most negative comments were about the right hand drive units that have a um a raised place here and so I'm going to just move the camera over there real quick. And you see, you know, there's a little raised section there. Obviously, when it's, when it's left-hand drive, that's not bothering the driver at all. Now, you have it here, but, you know, my foot's on the right-hand side. So the footwell is good from, I mean, it's not huge, but it's good from that standpoint. Now, I have noticed that... Um, in, driving down the interstate, and I'm going to jump jump in real quick so that I can demonstrate this. Um, when I'm driving down the interstate and I put my cruise on, what do I want to do with my right foot? Well, I want to stretch it out. Well, you can't. I mean, there's no room under the brake pedal. You can't squeeze it in here. Basically, the only thing you can do is kind of move this foot out of the way, your left foot out of the way, and stretch it out. And you got to turn a little bit to do that. So, you know, it's not the most comfortable thing in the world. I've only driven it, you know, roughly 200 miles on the highway. Um, so we'll, we'll see if I can come up with a better position. The other thing I like to do when I've got the cruise on is put my feet back, you know, up against the seat. Well, guess what? Again, the right foot, you've got that bar that you shift the seat with. And, you know, that's kind of in the way. And I whacked it, you know, whacked my calf on it a couple of times. And so, you know, the footwell area is not, you know, without some, uh, some weaknesses. Um, the rubber floor mat, you know, we talked about fit and finish and I said how great it was. This is something that's a little bit, and if you can see this one, it's, it's like it got messed up in shipment or something like that because it should be flat against it. I guess I could, you know, glue it or tape it or something like that, but I'm not going to. Again, that's, that's a very minor thing. 
Um, one other thing, and I heard some people mention this, or saw some people mention this. This paint right here on the ingress, egress point, you know, this rubber should stretch all the way down and should go over this cover or protect that because it's not going to be long at all. And, and I remember older vehicles sometimes would have this and this paint's going to get all rubbed off. And so that's not great. Hopefully there'll be some kind of aftermarket thing or, or you know, I don't know, may, may just have to touch up the paint. Who knows? Um, the Let's go back around over here to the front passenger footwell and just take a little bit closer look at that. You know, again, you see the raised spot here, but other than that, I mean, I think the uh, the space and you see the uh, the rubber mat here is is good. So I think that other one maybe just got bent funny in shipping. Um, the rear leg room. Uh, honestly, I've had two people in the back when we were driving down the road, and uh, the foot, the leg space is perfectly adequate in the back for uh, for grown adults. So I think that is all good. Um, seats, the seat comfort is quite good. You know, you can see. You know that it's soft but it's firm at the same time um, i really like uh, how comfortable the seats are as far as adjusting goes um, in the front you've really got three ways to adjust the seat you've got this latch here which well if i could make it move um, i can't seem to make that move so maybe if i was sitting in it it would move because I know I've shifted mine on this side. Yeah, so maybe you have to be in it or the car has to be on, but we have shifted that both on the passenger side and on the driver's side, you know, several times and it works, uh, works just fine. You see this, if you pull this up, you see the seat lifting and if you push it down, it's uh, when you pull up, it's not only lifting, it's also kind of leaning forward a little bit and then obviously you have this to adjust the angle of the back of the seat so you have three ways to uh, adjust the seat uh, the steering wheel position let's go back over the driver's side is you know not great to me uh, for one reason primarily it does have tilt and it's got telescoping so if you throw this lever here you can move the steering wheel up and down. I like it down and you can telescope out and in. But, you know, honestly, I uh, I want the steering wheel to be down further. Uh, I would like for the steering wheel to be angled more this way um and be down further uh you just can't make that happen so what i've done instead is i've raised the seat up like that and that gets me closer to and gets me to a comfortable uh, position in relation to the uh to the steering wheel um the bmw shifter you know i've rented some bmws before never really did get too used to the shifter um, I have gotten used to this one already. You know, it's a little bit aggravating at first because it's it's unique, I think. Uh, I don't know of any other cars that have a shifter like that, but um, you know, now, now that I know what to do, it's, it's not that big of a deal. Talk about window visibility, and I mentioned this previously, I think, but if you look at that front windshield, that is not nearly as big as windshields that we've come accustomed to. Now I can see out of it just fine. In fact, because you're up um, close, closer to the front bumper, your visibility out the front is very good, especially I think off-road, but that windshield is a little bit, it's smaller than what we're used to. And here too, when you're sitting in the, uh, the seat, this, you know, you kind of wish this was up a little bit, a little bit higher. Uh, but it's fine. I mean, I can see out the windows uh, just fine. Uh, I'm, I'm commenting on it because 
it's just different than most cars that you would drive in these days. It's a little lower, both the front windshield and the, uh, the windows and the doors. Um, let's talk about the armrest. You know, this, this big armrest that they give you here on the, on the door is really fantastic. You just naturally, your arm just kind of finds it and uh, it's very comfortable. And so that's a, that's a very nice, nice aspect of the, uh, of the interior. Rear window visibility. Now we talked about this already, but you look out the back, it's, you know, abysmal is the word that I would use. Um, you just can't really see much at all out the back window. We'll see if I can get it in the rear view mirror. I don't know if you can actually see it from there at the rear view mirror, but your, your visibility out the back window is, is really, really poor. Uh, let's talk about storage. Um, the center console here, you know, that's small. I mean, there's not much, there's not much room there. If you look at the space, I'll run around to the, the glove box on the other side. You do have these, you know, a space there for the inside, uh, door panels. Uh, look, look at this, look at this water bottle I have. I mean, it's actually tight, I'm having to push that a water bottle. So it obviously is small. I kind of wonder if that's something that they took from the European market and didn't realize that, you know, in America we're used to huge cup holders. The glove box. You know, there's not, <laughs> there's not much room in there at all. Again, I'm not complaining. I'm just, just telling you what you got. Um, saw somebody else comment on this. Um, in fact, I'm going to do this from this side. If you are driving and you have the seat positioned about where I am, you know, when you're going to move over one lane on a highway or whatever, you tend to look in your side view mirror and then you look, look over your left shoulder. Well, that, that pillar right there is, it's right in the way. So it does give you a kind of blind spot there and you have to maybe lean forward and turn your head back or whatnot. And I mean, I'm always aware of the cars that are around me and whatnot, but um, that does block your view when you're looking back over the, the, your left shoulder. Uh, as far as cabin noise goes, this car's pretty quiet. Now I did notice, and I think I've read this in another review, over here somewhere, there's a little buzz coming from over here. Now if you're talking or if you have the radio or stereo playing at all, you're not going to notice it. But there was a little buzz there, and I think I heard somebody, I seem to remember I heard somebody else mentioning that, uh, that same thing. Um, the back seats, as far as them folding down, they fold down very easily. So you just pull that up and, and lay the seat down. So I put that headrest down and so they lay down very easily, but you see it's nowhere near flat here. And obviously it's not down to the level of the, uh, floor in the back. So you know, that's a, that's not great. Um, and, and that's been common, commented on before, but the, uh, again, they, they lay down easily, but um, they just don't get anywhere near flat. Uh, I'm gonna show you in the back, and this is just a, a little bonus, I guess they gave us, but um, since we're talking about interiors, um, they did, this little rugged, rugged road uh, ice chest came with the vehicle. And I don't know if Enios gave it to us or if it was the Regal dealership, but I looked it up on the internet and it's $350 retail thing. So, you know, I've got it in here. Um, and that's, you know, that was a nice, nice little touch, a uh, little bonus for them to give to us. As far as the buttons, and the switches on the dashboard go, you know, I've used the seat heater. I've turned the auto start on and off. I've uh, adjusted the, the temperature control and the 
volume on the stereo and all that kind of stuff. And I really, really like the buttons and how easy they are to use and uh, that kind of thing. The, uh, the cruise, you know, there's the cruise right there on the steering wheel and I used it and it was very easy to use. As far as the instrument uh, cluster goes, you know, you have that that's between the steering wheel, which is basically your warning lights and whatnot. And then you have, you know, most of your information on that video screen right there. Now, the one thing I've noticed, and, and you've heard other people mention this, there are some spurious warning lights. You know, they're coming on and going off. Uh, it's not been too big of a deal. And, and in a few cases, if I turn the vehicle off and turn it back on, you know, it, it's self-corrected. So, you know, hopefully that'll all get worked out. One thing that I did find that's aggravating is there are, when you're driving at night and the headlights are on, there are two indicators that are green in this little instrument warning panel that tell you that your headlights are on. Well, you know, when you're driving at night, you don't want little green lights right in front of your eyes. And so it's, it's a little bit irritating. What I did was I just positioned my hand so that I couldn't see the, uh, you know, position my hand on the steering wheel where I couldn't see the, uh, those lights. Um, the speedometer and the, the fuel level all show here. Now the speedometer and the fuel level and the temperature all show right here in this area. So it's very easy to, you know, um, to notice what's going on and what your speed is and what the fuel level is uh, on the dashboard. I did, um, the screen was pretty bright and I looked it up in the settings and it said 50% was the illumination level. I set it down to 30% and that was more to my liking. Uh, the backup camera does show on here and probably from about here over, and I don't know if you can see that, but there's a lot of little fingerprints right there from already from me uh, tapping on the screen. And so I've used that screen quite a bit, but the, the backup camera, I heard some negative comments about that. To me, it was perfectly uh, acceptable. The Apple CarPlay and the maps and all that stuff show up in that same area from about here over and uh, that was all very good. The stereo sounded good. Now I did not get the subwoofer because I got the additional battery uh, but uh, the stereo sounded good to me. Um, there was, uh, you've heard about the ADAS automatic driver assistance system I think is what that call, is called this thing has got a speed limit warning. So if you're 55 miles an hour and you go over 50, 56 miles an hour, it starts beeping at you. That'll go off after a second, but it starts beeping at you. And it's, it's very irritating, obviously, for us. Um, the dealer told us they were well aware of it, that Enios is working on a fix for it. Um, basically, it's about six. Every time you start the car, you got to, you know, pl you know, punch the menu about six times to get it uh, turned off and it's, it's not a big deal and your dealer will show you how to do that but it was you know a little bit aggravating. Um, the auto stop start I showed you that that's this little button right here you do have to punch that if you don't like auto stop start you do have to punch it every time that you uh, start the car. Um, the screen navigation now I'm not going to pull it up right now I've got the car off and I'm not going to fool with all that but uh, Navigating the screen on that instrument cluster, you know, it's going to take some getting used to. There are some things that were, were confusing and, you know, to me weren't that great, but I'm already getting more accustomed to them and whatnot, and so I'm sure it'll be fine. This little, you know, knob here that they talk about quite a bit, you know, if you've got gloves on, then you can use this. I hadn't touched it. I hadn't looked at it. haven't done anything. Probably never will. Um, as long as the you know, the screen is working fine, then, then why would I want to use that? And then finally, um, and again, I've heard some other people talk about this, but the, uh, the key start, you know, there is the key. So your key goes in there. Well, guess what? At night, there's no light around it. So you have to, you know, feel your way, so to speak. Now, there is a big hole there. So basically, you just put your hand beside the steering wheel and, and it's real easy to get your finger into that hole and find that um, find where the key goes. 
All right, well, that's that's the interior, at least from my standpoint. Um, you know, mostly uh, pluses, a few minuses, but uh, again, love the car. And next week we'll go through all the uh, all the mechanical. And uh, appreciate you coming along for the journey. Uh, again, I plan on within uh, just a few weeks doing some off-road riding and and whatnot and uh, we'll get that on video too thanks for coming along